Welcome to Make Your Money Work Harder, presented by Florida Credit Union's Investment Center. My name is Mark Palladino, and I'll be presenting today. I've been a financial advisor for over 25 years, and I've been helping people plan, build, and pass on their wealth. I've always had an interest in how things work, and this led me to study engineering and I have a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering from Penn State University. I was working at Boeing, and that's where I got a passion for planning. Uh, I planned many major helicopter programs prior to becoming a financial advisor. I worked for several large uh, investment companies prior to coming to Florida Credit Union. Currently, I'm serving the four branches in Ocala and the branch in Deland. At this time, I'd like to introduce our other exceptional advisor, Ken Toops. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ken Toops, and I've been a financial advisor for over 15 years now. I'm a chartered retirement planning counselor, and I've been here at the credit union since 2011. Um, I service our members in the Gainesville, Stark, and Lake City areas. Thanks, Ken. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to say normally we would have done this as a seminar where we would have invited you all either to a restaurant or to one of our branches. But with COVID, uh, we just thought it wasn't right having 30 or 40 people in a room. And we also decided that it might be a good idea if members couldn't attend the seminar, that this way we are recording this so that you could catch it at your convenience. The other thing that we wanted to point out is that all the credit unions have been open. Um, and I also prefer to do business in person, but I am willing to do business via video conference or a Zoom conference. And for years, the majority of the business I've done has been over the phone. Now, also special cases, if somebody is incapacitated, I will meet you at your home. The idea is, is that we're here to offer you superior customer service. I generally return calls the same day and always within 24 hours, and members will have access to my cell phone. This is our legal disclosure slide. Florida Credit Union has chosen CUSO Financial Services to deliver investment solutions for their members. We offer a wide range of non-proprietary products, and I'll talk about this more in detail a little bit later. However, we do not offer national credit union federally insured products, those products are only offered through Florida Credit Union. Well, like I said earlier, I have a passion for planning that I got while I was working at Boeing. And the majority of this webinar is going to be talking about how to create a successful retirement plan. I'm going to use the acronym PLAN, P-L-A-N. Most successful people have goals and plans, and I like to use the example of Tiger Woods, whose goal was to become the most successful professional golfer of all time. And he couldn't have achieved that goal unless he and his father, Earl, had developed a plan to do that. I'm also gonna talk about maximizing your contributions in order to reach your goals, diversifying your portfolio. I'm gonna talk about asset allocation, risk tolerance, and also time horizon. And finally, I'm going to talk about scheduling regular financial reviews. What will your retirement look like? Well, with our help, we think it can look like this. You know, picture yourself driving a convertible with the top down, or maybe perhaps walking on the beach with a significant other, or maybe even playing cards with friends and, and perhaps family members. Or maybe it looks like this. Maybe you're fishing with a friend or driving a boat. The biggest hurdle in doing any or all of these things is having enough money to do it. The goal of this seminar is going to be, is, is going to, be to show you how to save enough money to do all the things you want to do in retirement. I said earlier about creating a plan, and essentially, like I said, the acronym plan are the steps to achieve your goals. So the PAN plan stands for Pay yourself first. We recommend that you have to promise yourself to take advantage of your employer's retirement plan, whether it's a 401k, uh, 403b, or any other 
type of contribution every plan. Like I was saying earlier, you want to promise to pay yourself first with these plans because it's like getting free money from your employer. Or you could also look at it where if you're getting 50 cents on the dollar, that's like getting a 50% return. The other thing that you want to look at is that you won't even miss the money because it's coming out pre-tax. It's coming out before taxes. I know that when I contributed, I, it might have only affected my, 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 my pay period check by 50 or $100, which is money that I would have spent on coffee at Starbucks or Wawa or going out to lunch at work. The other thing is, is if you do contribute a large amount of money, it could save money on taxes. So like I said, since it comes out pre-tax, it could actually lower your bracket. Now the other financial thing that you're doing here is dollar cost averaging. And the reason why that's important is that no one can pick tops and bottoms of the market. So the idea is, is that you're gonna get the average price and even getting the average price is going to be better than trying to time the market because no one can time the market. The other financial concept that we're doing is you're taking advantage of the time value of money. Rather than waiting until you get a large sum of money to invest, the dollar that you put in today can grow to five, 10, 15, maybe even $20, 10, 20, 30 years from now. The Ellen plan, is for live within your means. The picture here of cutting up a credit card, in my opinion, is the last resort. People need access to credit. If you wanna rent a car or go on vacation and stay in a hotel room, you need to have a credit card. However, if you can't control your credit card spending without doing this, then by all means, I recommend doing it. I like the idea of having your credit card in a block of ice or better yet, maybe in a jail cell, and you don't get to use it until the balance is paid off. Live within your means. You have to have financial fitness or you have to have a commitment. It's very similar to going to a gym where you can't just go to a gym once a month and expect to get into shape. I mean, I personally try to go to the gym at least two to three times a week, and you have to be disciplined and have self-control, and that also you know, applies to the to, to eating right. I mean, you just can't eat whatever you want. I mean, you just can't buy whatever you want. You have to use discipline and self-control. And when you meet with me, one of the things that I will work with you on is an income planning worksheet. And that'll help you, it'll show you where your money's going and you'll you'll see where you're wasting money or where you could possibly save more money to benefit you in retirement. Now, what you want to do is you want to promise to pay off your credit cards. Credit card debt is the number one reason why people can't get ahead. The average credit card holder has around a $6,500 balance and pays 10% interest or more. So conservatively, that would be $650 a year or $55 a month that you're paying the credit card company that can go towards your retirement. Now, I realize some of you are saying, well, Mark, I wish I had $6,500 of credit card debt. I have $10,000 or $15,000 worth of debt. Well, the idea is, is that we realize you can't do it all at once. The idea is when you eat an elephant, you're not going to eat an elephant at one city. You're going to eat an elephant one bite at a time. So depending on how much credit card debt that you have, it might take six months. It might take a year. It might take a year and a half. And the way I recommend going about this is start by paying off your high interest rate debt first. And then ultimately when you pay your credit card off, you'd be paying yourself instead of the credit card company. The A in plan is to assure your, your family stability. Estate planning is not only for the rich, it benefits everybody. Everybody should have an estate plan as well as a retirement plan. So what's the best way to assure your family stability against catastrophic loss? In my opinion, the best way to do that is with life insurance. Probably the most catastrophic thing that could happen would be the untimely passing or death of one of the family's breadwinners. So if we go back to the previous slide where if you had your credit card debt paid off, 
that $55 a month could fund two $250,000 20-year term policies. So if something happened to either one of you, you would get $250,000 to help you through you know, that loss. The other thing that you need is a will, or you need to update your will. Wills are not just for the rich. It doesn't matter how much or how little money you have. The idea of a will is that whatever personal belongings or assets you have are going to go to the people that you designate. Now, there is one thing that you have to be careful of, and that's the beneficiaries that you designate on your IRAs, 401ks, and insurance products. These bypass your will. I had a member come in last month who was working with a company and had a 401k prior to getting married, and he never changed the beneficiary on his 401k plan to his spouse. So unfortunately, you know, that could have went to his brother, and his brother really, you know, wouldn't have had to, you know, give the money to, to his spouse. So it's something that you really have to be careful with. The other thing in Florida that you have to be careful with is probate. Generally, it takes anywhere from six to nine months to settle an estate. So you want to make sure that you have your liquid money or your emergency money in joint name. This way, if something happens to either one of you, you have access to that money. Finally, you want to make sure you have a power of attorney just in case you become incapacitated. I recommend that you have a friend or a family member rather than have the court appoint someone. For example, when my mother was getting older, I had my sister as the power of attorney, as her healthcare power of attorney, because she worked for a pharmaceutical company, and I was the financial power of attorney because I'm a financial advisor. And finally, the end in plan is for never stop learning, and I like to say never stop planning. Because as time goes on, things change and you're going to have to develop new plans. What we recommend that you do is write down your financial goal. This makes the goals real and attainable, not just financial, but also any kind of life goals that you might have. I like to use the example of a roadmap. And let's say you're going to go on a trip and you're going to go to Yellowstone National Park, which is a place a lot of families like to go to. You're not just going to get in your car and start driving to Yellowstone Park and ask people how to get there. Um, if you're like myself, what we did is we didn't end up driving, we drove some of the way, but we actually drove to an airport, took a plane, flew into Bozeman, we rented a car, and then we drove to the western entrance of Yellowstone National Park. We stayed, we you know, made reservations at a hotel to stay you know, the whole week, and of course we made reservations to come back. So the what you have to do is is have it planned out and that's what i help you with with your finances the other thing you have to be careful of is like i said earlier your plans can change and i like to use the example of when my wife and i moved to florida you know we envisioned that we were going to buy 10 or 20 acres and every uh, piece of ground we saw that we could afford that was that large was either half hour or 45 minutes away from a Publix or a Walmart, or it didn't have high speed internet access. So what did we do? We modified or changed our goals. We said, well, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that, but I mean, life is not bad if we're able to buy one to three acres. And that's what we ended up doing. And we're five minutes away from a Walmart and a few more minutes away uh, from a Publix. And we have high speed internet access. I'd like you to use me as your sounding board for your ideas and help you focus your goals. I'm here to listen, to learn, and to understand your financial situation. So the more I know about you, the better I can help you solve your financial problems by offering you solutions through CUSA Financial Services. Maximizing contributions. Well, now that you know that you have to pay yourself first, how are we gonna do that? One of the best ways to do that is to maximize the contributions. So, for example, in 2021, you can contribute up to $6,000 to your IRA. And if you're over 50, you could put in an extra thousand for a total of $7,000. The other thing, you're able to put in $19,500 into your 401k plan. And if you're over 50, again, you have a catch up provision to put in an extra $6,500 
for a total of $26,000. Now, I want to point out, even you know, 2022 limits are higher, but I want to point out that even though we are in 2022, you could still make your IRA contributions up to April the 15th. And finally, I want to say about that is that you can max out both your IRA and your 401k, especially if you get behind the eight ball. At this time, I wanted to point out some of the differences between a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. A traditional IRA, like I mentioned earlier, the money comes out pre-tax. So that's why you don't notice the, that your paycheck isn't going down that much. And the whole idea or concept behind it is assume that you're in the 30% bracket now while you're working. And when you retire, you're, you know, you're going to lose that income and your tax bracket, let's say, is going to drop from the 30% down to the 15% or 10%. So ultimately, when you start taking the money out of your IRA, you're only going to be taxed at 15 or 10% as opposed to 30%. With a Roth IRA, the money's coming out after tax. The advantage with a Roth is the fact that you don't have to make required, required minimum distributions, and I'm sure you heard about RMD. So with a regular IRA, they, they've extended it where you now have to take required minimum distributions at age 72. With a Roth, you never do. However, there are very strict rules as to whether you're allowed to contribute based upon what your income is, and I'd be happy to sit down with you if you're interested in doing a Roth IRA. Now, one of the pitfalls I want to warn you about with a traditional IRA is not taking lump sum withdrawals. I had a member a few weeks ago that wanted to make a lump sum withdrawal. And what they, they didn't realize, like I was thinking, well, oh, there's some family event, they're buying a house or something happened where they need access to this money or this large amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is, is that wasn't the case. The case was they were very uncomfortable with what was happening in the financial markets. But what they didn't realize is if they took that lump sum distribution, that would be added to their income. So their tax bracket might go from the 15% bracket up to the 30% bracket, which would kind of defeat the purpose of having the IRA. So what I try to tell them is within the IRA, you have a lot more investment options rather than just stocks and bonds and mutual funds. You can actually go into money market funds or treasury funds, which are one of the safest investments that you can have. Finally, I want to point out the fact that if you ever have a financial windfall, you can actually contribute more to your IRA or your 401k. An example would be, let's say you were contributing $9,500 a year to your, to your, to your um, 401k. And if you received an inheritance, let's say you could increase that, you know, every year you could make it 19,500 until your inheritance was, was, was used up. Because I personally didn't put in the maximum I couldn't afford to, but when I did receive an inheritance from my mother, I actually started maxing out my 401k contributions. Investment options. Diversify your portfolio based on risk tolerance and time horizon. Well, how are we going to do this? Well, the most important thing that you that we can do is have a comprehensive financial plan. And what the plan does, it provides the steps that you need to achieve your goals. One of the biggest things that I do as a financial advisor is try to optimize your asset allocation based upon what your risk tolerance is and what your time horizon is. So what is asset allocation? Well, really, it's just the percentage that you have in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, CDs, money markets, what have you. And this is going to change over time. Generally, as you get older, you get more conservative. So you're going to have less stocks and more bonds. So let's talk about your retirement plan rollovers. How can that increase your diversification? Well, if you want to roll over your, your employer's old 401k, you might only have five or six or seven options to choose from. Whereas if you roll it over into an IRA, you have thousands of different options. The same thing is true in what's known as an in-service um, distribution or rollover. So rather than only having limited choices in your employer's plan, if they allow you to roll over some or all of it, you're able to have more choices or more diversity. 
Uh, I haven't talked about business retirement plans, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that now. There are two main types. One is a SEP plan and one is a simple IRA. Uh, I prefer a SEP simply because it has larger a larger amount that you can contribute. Uh, I believe it's up to $58,000 for 2021 or 20 percent of your income. And the idea behind this is like many small businesses, there is a cost associated with having a 401k, but there is very little cost associated with having a SEP IRA. So it's a way for small business owners to save for their retirement. We talked a little bit about life insurance earlier. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it now. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that we all need life insurance. It's just how much and what kind. And some of our members could really use to have long-term care or disability income insurance. And I recommend that you sit down with me and talk about it. Uh, an example I'd like to use is actually something different, which would be for auto insurance. And you know, everybody realizes how much they need auto insurance. And when I was reviewing or doing a financial plan for one of our members about a month ago, and I was, you know, one of the things I do is I'll review your auto policy for you too. And when I was looking at her auto policy, I realized that she only had $50,000 with the liability coverage. And if you're ever driving around Ocala or driving around Gainesville, I'm sure you've seen the signs for attorneys that said, oh, I got this person a $700,000 settlement or $500,000 settlement. The only thing that they don't say is who does that money come from? And that could come from somebody like you who might have made a simple mistake driving and now someone can't work for the rest of their life. And if you were to get a settlement against you or a judgment against you, I should say, for $500,000, for most of our members, you know, you would lose your home, you would lose your life savings. But the good news is there's a way to stop that. And it's simply by increasing your auto insurance and having something called an umbrella policy. And for as little as around $350 a year, you could purchase a million dollars of an umbrella policy. So God forbid you wouldn't lose everything that you have. Retirement income strategies. Well, your strategies change when you retire. When you're, when you're not retired, you're mainly looking for growth. When you do retire, the idea is, or when you're approaching retirement too, the idea is, is you're trying to maximize your income and minimize your risk. So you wanna to try to live off your investment income or, or touch as little of the principal as you can so you don't end up running out of money. The other thing you have to remember is that we try to do this in the most tax efficient manner. And the example I like to use is looking at two different investments. Let's say a tax-free municipal bond that's paying 4% or a taxable corporate mutual fund that's paying 5%. Now, depending on your tax bracket, the taxable equivalent yield of 4% might actually be 55 or 6%, which is certainly better than 5%. Your investment options. We've listed here the four basic types of investment options, uh, speculative, growth, income, and asset protection. Now, most of our members their risk tolerance is usually between growth and income or income and asset allocation or asset protection, pardon me. However, even though you might have a growth and income risk tolerance, you still need some of the speculative investments. Now, not a great deal, but some. You should have some real estate, maybe 2 or 3%. And if we look at what's happened over the last two years, I mean, real estate has performed 20, 30, 40% or more. You also might want to consider having some commodities or some junk bonds, not a large percentage, but a small percentage. And what this does, this gives you additional yield into your portfolio, additional return, and it also helps reduce the risk. Granted, probably most of your positions are going to be in blue chip type stocks or really mutual funds to get the diversification, some mid cap, large cap stocks, maybe even some global and international type things. We're also gonna have investment grade corporate bonds and investment grade municipal bonds with maybe some government bonds like Jenny Mays. Uh, and finally, we're gonna use asset protection type things such as CDs, insured deposit accounts, and of course, money markets. Working with a financial professional, well, why is it important? Well, studies have shown that an advisor can increase your average yearly return by 
or more. All right, I said we're gonna talk about regular financial reviews, but before we do that, I think the most important thing you have to do is you wanna find the right investment advisor. Uh, I recommend that you wanna find an advisor that's a fiduciary. So what is a fiduciary? A fiduciary acts in your best interest. So for example, Ken and I are fiduciaries. We're registered investment advisors, uh, series 65 licensed with FINRA, which is the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, which is overseen by the SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, like I said earlier, I like to take a holistic approach, meaning I, like, I, want, to, I want to try to find out as much as I can about you in order to make the best financial decisions for you. You could also consider me like a, a financial quarterback. So for instance, I'm not the one picking out the individual stocks and bonds, but I know that this is the best mutual fund. And I also have Cuso Financial's help where they vet the, the mutual fund and then I vet it additionally. Now remember when I said about, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about non-proprietary solutions. Well, the idea is, is that we don't use any Cuso specific funds and we're picking the best funds out there. I like to use the example of when I hurt my shoulder, I guess around 10 years ago or more. And when I, my family doctor said, well, I want you to go see an orthopedic surgeon and you know, see what he has to say. And of course he took x-rays and the first thing out of his mouth was, oh, you need surgery. And I'm like, well, don't you think we maybe could take a more conservative approach? Like, you know, how about consider give me a cortisone shot or maybe some oral steroids and here it is, you know, two or three cortisone shots later, 12 years later, and I still haven't had surgery. The other thing I want to point out is that some of our members are going to insurance agents for financial planning advice. So just like a surgeon where a surgeon wants to cut, an insurance agent only has insurance solutions for your financial solutions. One of the most important things I do is access your current financial situation. I did talk about the income planning worksheet, which helps me do that. And I like to use the example of going back to the roadmap again, where why it's so important. If you're going to Yellowstone National Park and you're starting from New York, or if you're starting from San Diego, or if you're starting from Gainesville, it's a very different route to get there. Finally, you have to implement a plan. We could have the greatest plan in the world, but unless you actually get in your car and start driving there, you're never gonna to get to your destination. And like I said earlier, there's always roadblocks along, along the way and changes in your plans. And that's why for most of our members, I recommend that they sit down with me at least on a yearly basis. And I am available usually within 24 to 48 hours if there's some kind of life situation that you need to call me in. Like I said earlier, um, you know, all our members have access to me via my cell phone. You could send me texts and emails. At this time, Ken and I would like to thank you for attending this webinar. Are there any questions? All right, I have a question, Ken. I still make an IR contribution for 2021. Well, I believe I asked that already in the fact that, yes, you can do that. Um, you have until April the 15th of this year to make a contribution. Uh, I have another question. Uh, when setting up a meeting with you, is there anything I need to bring? Uh, I recommend that you don't bring anything to the initial meeting. I think the best thing is, is that I get an overall picture of where you're at and what you're doing. And then after that, I, we could determine, you know, we can get down to the nuts and bolts of, of what we need to do. I'm still looking for questions. Uh, here's another question. Does it cost anything to meet with you? Absolutely not. We do a complimentary service for the credit union and you know, you'll know you have whatever it takes, a half hour, hour of my time to discuss you know, what, what you need. And at this time, uh, I don't believe there are any more questions. I'd like to thank you all for attending the webinar and have a great evening.